A woman you don't know has accused a man you don't know of sexual harassment at a company you definitely do know, Uber. Its chief executive has rushed to tell the world that the company is launching an urgent investigation into what he calls abhorrent behaviour. But, and here's the catch, it's only doing so after this woman, who no longer works for Uber, published a blog on the matter, which promptly went viral. She claims that bosses and HR repeatedly failed to act when she reported her manager, who'd made a pass at her on her very first day. Apart from the delicious irony that this Stone Age behaviour is allegedly happening at a cutting-edge technology company, this woman's story is representative of thousands of women's experiences. The Trades Union Congress found 52% of British women have experienced sexual harassment at work, and yet 79% said they hadn't reported it. Most women never bother to report it because they don't want to cause trouble and they fear they won't be believed. Invisible sexism is rampant. The fight back can't start until women find their voices and when they do, until they are believed. Newsflash, we women aren't just boobs and vaginas on legs for men's delectation in the workplace. You've all missed me. <laughs> Welcome back, Emma. With a bang. Um, well, the first, trying to go back through some of the earlier points you made in that opening, I think the most important part of, of, of the culture of any organisation is about people being able to report harassment. If we can sort that out, then we can start to break down what is considered, you know, aggressive harassment, sexual harassment, unwanted harassment that humiliates women, and what is... Um, relationship building in between men and women in offices. Lots of relationships are formed in offices and men and women do flirt with each other. So it's a fine line between... You're talking about your uh, football career now. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> but there is, a, there, is a, there is an argument to say, whilst in its extremity, of course, I'm very sympathetic. Mm. Um, and it is really important that people feel that they're comfortable and, and in their workplace. But at the same time, if I take it to its, to its end game, to the... To the to, to the sort of the, 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 the finality of it, I think, well, hang on, men and women do have flirt with each other, yeah. so... But hang yeah, on, yeah. there's flirting and then there's having There is, I'm saying that. Part. Yeah, no, so what I wanted to say, and I want to add to what I started by was saying it is... Boss? It was it was her direct colleague. supervisor. Oh, okay. And so the thing that I, was, I really want to make clear here, and I made the point, actually, and it's all allegations at this point, just to say, is that she had evidence. So actually, in a technology company, loads of this happened over something, I'll just explain it to you, called G-Chat. It's yeah, kind yeah. of instant mm, chat yeah, on the yeah, computer. Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> I know someone runs your Twitter account yeah, for you. Not any longer. Uh, but anyway, the point was, she had screen grabs of this stuff. So if you can't go with a piece of evidence and be believed, and then it takes you to leave the company yeah, yeah. and write a blog... That's not what he said. Can I just... No, 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 that's no, the reporting I'm, part I'm, of I'm it. adding just say, to this, what Graham has just said Can I just say because we should say what... Uber does say in response sure, to these sorry. allegations and the CEO of Uber did tweet and he said what's described here is abhorrent and against everything we believe in anyone who behaves this way or thinks this is okay will be fired and he went on to say that there was going to be an investigation so obviously that's and, he's, and the man who is in question mm. has also left the company now so nobody is still working at that company which is interesting in itself. Can I just say if we didn't. If we outlaw flirting in the workplace, I'd never have had any sex. It's I not mean, that's effective. <laughs> that's effective. Oh, the only place I'm ever going to pick people up. I would, never, so I would never have got married. <laughs> no, I, I would. I mean, honestly. <laughs> so, like, how, how has this but been reduced to flirting come, in the workplace? On, You've come, jumped on the I, lowest I rung am, of no, the tree. Because what the point that Graham made, which you again just. It's, Brilliant how you just choose to ignore it. Learn from the master. <laughs> was how do you allow, because I think you agree, men and women, and sometimes men and men, and sometimes women and women are going to flirt in work, yes. which is great. But this isn't what about you have flirting, to do, about no, but this is the. No, I agree. You've jumped on Graham's point, no, 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 which was I only am, a sub point. I'm underscoring his point by saying that, and we all know there are quite right, quite rightly, laws in place the minute you start, I'm going to use the expression, hitting on, hitting on people, that you can go. Classic. Okay, harassing, whatever you want to call it. Right. But where are you going to draw the line? Because people, as he said, people will flirt. Can it's I a just, fact. I just think that's ridiculous. And it's what men what always ridiculous? do. It's ridiculous to say that there's a fine line between flirting and harassment. There isn't a fine line. You know, harassment is harassment. Flirting okay. is flirting. H hands up. We've got a panel, mixed panel here. Mm. Hands up. Who has been harassed, sexually harassed in the workplace? Uh, obviously not. 
No. <laughs> Graham? No, when I was playing that? football, <laughs> when I was playing football, often oh. women would come up to to us oh, and 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 sort of grab you. Well, but all these sorts, yeah. women, unknown random women. You weren't, so yeah, they weren't not female colleagues. colleagues. Slightly different, I think. I think. Well, not really. But he's in his place. I'm not in my place never been sexually harassed. No, I haven't. But. I would like to say, and this is an important point, if you would allow me to underscore my own point, which is we have laws in this country, and we're really lucky to live in the West as women, where it's enshrined in our legislation that we can demand equal treatment at work and not be viewed in any way other than what we're doing there, which is working. However, and Rachel, I'm sure you'll agree with this, there is a difference between having laws and then the reality of those laws being enacted. And I think there is still a chasm between people going to work and being treated just for what their work is, especially when it comes to women, because all men and women have issues at work. I don't deny that. Mm. But women often have a sexual element added but on top goes, that men don't. It goes back to what I say, And it's though. an abuse if, of power, because most men are still in charge of con countries, Emma, countries goes, and companies. It, go, it goes back to what I said at the beginning, though. If we get the reporting culture right within the workplace, that will help set out I do, I agree the, with that. the environment in which men and women can work work together and still develop relationships. The point of flirting in the workplace I brought up is because a, lot, really of, a lot of relationships no, and marriages come from people meeting in the workplace. But there is an element of human, there is, I'm not talking not about different. this specific case. Well, I'm yeah, but, launching okay. from that because it's a really, but I think but she, it's a really good example because she had evidence, she wasn't believed, and it was someone in a superior position. But that goes position. back to what I was saying about reporting, Emma. That's think, all I that just, we can cover that in that I one issue. That. The point is, you've also got to protect the very human need yeah. of, of relationships. Don't think you need to protect you it do at all. because ultimately, a guy could be in a situation where he gets accused of harassment when all he's doing is following up on his human instinct, which is to go I and think, speak to a woman because you know, he actually finds dreams, her attractive. In our we dreams, got to that if point. we when we get to the stage that our only problem is. Um, borderline situations that could be flirting, then I think we'll have done really well. Because at the Absolutely. moment, I mean, you know, you asked how many people, how many of us have faced harassment at work. What happened to me? I wouldn't have even described it as harassment at the time. It's a very male environment. You know, I had male colleagues making comments about my breasts, about, you know, my bum. I mean, things that in hindsight... Did it, you report very, it? No, I didn't report it. I wouldn't even have defined it as harassment. Because to me, it was just part of part and part of going to work but, every day. That, that's that's not a borderline between no, flirting. Not. I agree. And that's what's going but, on, though. That's what's going well, on day in, day out for women. Let me, just, let me just drag it a little. I, that's horrific. No one should be, but it goes be forced. All uh, the time, but yeah. How does a manager ask uh, uh, an underling, for want of a better if they, they can take her out, or vice versa? If I'm a manager of an account firm, how can I would, I would, would work? Oh, <laughs> come on, Emma. You this is what be. happens in Sorry. offices. Most people meet. <laughs> your their direct their report, Emma, shouldn't Emma, be. I'm running Reality an account be your shag buddy. And, and, and I'm getting on really well with a, a young woman who, who answers the phone. If she's your phone. direct report, if you're you both should... single. If you're yeah, both single. Yeah, we're both Actually, Nick, some companes do outlaw intra office relationships, especially in America, and they usually do things 10 years in advance of us. But, um, yeah, but you've, you've got to when I was working on the FT Sorry. in the early 90s, we had the same thing, this intranet, and sometimes, you know, a message would flash on your screen, it would go, drink, and then it would be the name yeah. of the man who sent it. Sometimes, I didn't even know the man who sent it. But if you, wait, can I finish? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Basically, you know, your mother sort of brings you up how to deal with men, and I think it is unwelcome when it, what you had it. Agreed. But if it, if it was a bloke who I didn't know, and I obviously, obviously wasn't going to have a drink with him, you could ignore it. Can but, you know, say, if it is pervasive, sorry, it's, what are you doing here? it's illegal, <laughs> Emma. No, no, There's no, a no, difference no. You between... and Nick, you and Nick, have obviously had some great shags at work, mm -hmm. and I'm happy for well, you. Well, not together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need but to listen, get that out there. Listen, that's, that's, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that word. Tonight. But anyway, I'm sure you have, and go have more good on you, right? <laughs> We're not talking about that. Talking about harassment. I agree with Emma. Yeah. But you're both showing that you're not no, getting my original point. We're not talking point. about harassment. But I am. <laughs> I mean, sorry, sorry. At the beginning of my argument, we talked about civil war. We stuck on the point for you. Have you never we stick ever on harassment? gone out with somebody at work uh -oh. no. in a romantic way? No, never. Because I've not? been with my boy since university. Right. Well, that's, no. that's no, I don't, I don't And who approached who? I don't think anyone's trying to <laughs> ban approaching. relationships with colleagues. But I think it is. No, I think your point raises a problem, though, Nick, because relationships are about power. If your boss asks you out and you're a young woman, he's an established man, there is an, a power dynamic issue there and, and you might True. not feel able to say to no it. and that is problematic. You've got to recognise that. 
you've got to recognise that, that that's at least an issue that you should think very so they carefully can't, so, about. So, so we won't have relationships within companies? If I were managing someone, I would be very, at very the moment, wary of asking allowed, them out. mostly. And in some companies... You're not allowed with your boss. boss. With your boss. boss your direct boss. The underling. Yeah, probably, and this is what this I was. I don't think that's a national law, Emma. No, you're not allowed. It's an abuse of power. All right. Well, same rules um, with teachers and We'll leave everybody to their... Of the self their, their flirting at work. There's no flirting that goes on here. I, sh- I assure you. <laughs>